Hey Biology 400 students, welcome to Energy and Organisms screencast session number four. This is Mr. Gales. Uh, I want to remind you to make sure that you have your note paper ready to take two column notes. We've talked about this in class quite a bit. If it's a main idea, it's underlined on the presentation. Main ideas would go on the left hand side of your notes. Supporting details like definitions, examples we talk about, um, might maybe even be a drawing, go on the right hand side. Also, very important, if there's something that you're not understanding as we talk about it and go through this uh, screencast, make sure that you write down questions so that as we come back together in class, uh, we have uh, an opportunity to answer those questions as we go along. All right, uh, we're going to wrap up the, the thermodynamics unit by looking at typical chemical reactions that occur in organisms. In the early screencast uh, for this unit, we just simply defined energy and we gave a rationale for why organisms require a source of energy and why organisms have to eat with the first and second law of thermodynamics. The second screencast looked at exothermic and endothermic reactions and the difference between a catalyzed and uncatalyzed reaction. And then in screencast three, we studied enzymes and how enzymes work. So this screencast is going to bring all of those ideas together and look at the major kinds of chemical reactions that occur in organisms. So a lot of what I talk about here should make a lot of sense in context with what we've already studied. And the first main idea that we'll discuss together is metabolism. Metabolism can be defined as all the chemical activities in a cell or in an organism. We sometimes refer to it as the sum total of all the chemical reactions that go on inside a living thing. The diagram we see here on this page gives us an example of glucose metabolism. Glucose is the key energy molecule that our cells use. This is sort of like your, this is what charges up your battery when your battery's dead. Uh, this, we oftentimes refer to this as a simple sugar. So glucose metabolism. In the picture, we see the intake of glucose in our diet. A lot of times uh, we consume complex carbohydrates in the form of starch or glycogen if we're eating meat. Um, those two molecules are made up of thousands and thousands of repeating units of glucose. We also take in disaccharides, uh, typically in the form of fruit sugar uh, or, or sugar that we might add into our food. Monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, galactose, we also consume those things in fruit and in sweets and things like that. So all of those uh, sugar molecules are taken into our digestive system and processed through our stomach, and our small intestine. And then we have um, two major things that can happen with them. One would be storage. So if we look down here in our small intestines, and our, uh, as digestion is occurring, one thing that can happen with the glucose is that we can store it for later usage. The storage molecule that we use in our cells is called glycogen, and that's stored in the liver, which you see here, and also in our major muscles. So that's one thing that happens with the glucose. Another thing that would occur with glucose is it becomes what we would refer to as free glucose, it's distributed throughout your blood and it's used right away by cells. And so glucose molecules like this, although we would probably see it in a ring form in our cells, this molecule is going to be traveling throughout our blood all the time. We refer to it as blood sugar. So when we look at metabolism, we're really looking at the, the breaking down of the big complex molecules. Remember that would be like catabolic reactions are breaking down, generally they're exothermic. And then also we have the, the building up uh, reactions that would occur. For instance, when we're building glycogen for storage, those would be anabolic processes, generally considered endothermic. Okay. Now, when we consider reactions in cells, there are two major kinds of reactions that are going to be commonly referred to in biology. Our next main idea is synthesis. Synthesis is a type of reaction that generally involves building up. So, very common example of this, uh, we, we sometimes refer to this as biosynthesis. Anytime molecules are built by cells, that's biosynthesis. The best example that we can use is photosynthesis. It's got the word synthesis right in the name. Uh, photosynthesis takes simple molecules like carbon dioxide and water and builds up more complex molecules like the glucose molecule. Another major kind of reaction that we've learned about that is a synthesis reaction, of course, is dehydration synthesis. This is when we're taking building blocks and putting them together by removing water. And again, so if I had uh, several glucose molecules, I could join them together 
I could form a disaccharide, I could eventually start the process of forming a, a polysaccharide like glycogen. Now, to tie in some information from pre previous screencasts, synthesis reactions, because they're building up, are referred to as anabolic. And because the net result in terms of energy is that we're building more complex molecules and making many bonds, we would refer to these, generally speaking, as endothermic types of reactions. All right, we're going to move on to the next type of reaction, which is referred to as a decomposition reaction. Decomposition reactions are called are generally referred to as the kind of reactions where materials are broken down. So we have a complex molecule, and we're going to break it apart. A great example of this is cellular respiration, as you're seeing here. Cellular respiration is where we take our glucose molecule, and we're going to run it through the mitochondrion as part as a series of, of reactions that are going to literally take the, the energy in the bonds out of this molecule. Digestion is another example of decomposition where we have larger food molecules and they're being broken down through the process, the, the chemical reactions that are occurring either in the stomach or in the small intestine. Now another uh, example of a decomposition reaction that you guys are familiar with is hydrolysis. So this picture here we're seeing where we have a molecule of sucrose um, and, and the hydrolytic process occurs when we add water in. We're going to break the glycosidic linkage here that's joining these two monosaccharides together and we end up with a single glucose and a single fructose molecule. Decomposition reactions again are catabolic. They break down. Uh, generally speaking we refer to these as exothermic because the, we're, we're in terms of energy we're breaking the bonds that we're holding together the molecules in these uh, larger molecules. All right the last uh, idea that relates to the kind of reactions that we're going to look at will, will be called energy exchange in cells. There are, are lots of different ways energy is exchanged in cells and there's two main ideas that we need to look at here before we start looking at uh, uh, the major kind of energy carrier that we'll use in, in cell biology. First main idea that you see on this slide is called oxidation. Oxidation is the removal of electrons from a molecule. So if I have my glucose molecule here, as it runs through the process of cellular respiration, in essence what's going to occur is the molecule will be broken apart when, when uh, the molecule is broken apart, I'm essentially removing electrons from it, as I remove electrons, I'm removing a little bit of energy, just little bits at a time. It's kind of a simplified way of looking at it, but it's an easy way to begin our understanding of it. So by taking away and breaking down this molecule, removing electrons, that's called oxidation. The next main idea here relates and is sort of the opposite of oxidation, and that's reduction. Reduction would be the gaining of electrons by a molecule. Uh, it's a, that one's a little bit... It's hard to make sense of that one because when we reduce something, we usually think about taking away. But remember, electrons are negatively charged. So what this is really looking at is when you gain electrons, you're reducing the overall uh, molecule by adding negativity to it. That's kind of a way to remember it. Now, another great way to remember oxidation and reduction, right? Oxidation is losing electrons. Reduction is gaining electrons. You can use a saying... And it's a little silly, but it works. You can say, Leo the lion says, grrr, right? Leo, lose electrons oxidized, and then gaining electrons reduced. So Leo says, grrr. And I'm going to ask you to say that in class, and you have to use the, the grrr when you do it. Okay? I know it's silly, but it'll help you to remember it. Okay, now, uh, when we think about oxidation... We can think back to some of the, the kinds of things that we've already talked about. Cellular respiration is obviously an example of a series of reactions that involve oxidizing the glucose molecule. We're going to take electrons away from it, break it down. Reduction, a lot of reduction occurs in photosynthesis where we're going to be building up. Now, what occurs in decomposition reactions, like cellular respiration for instance, uh, these, these kinds of reactions overall that reduce free energy is the, the bonds in a molecule will be broken and they'll be rearranged because we again we know that matter is not destroyed uh, we can rearrange that matter into different substances so the bonds would be broken during a decomposition reaction some of the energy that was here in the bonds holding that molecule together is released as heat and free energy now 
when we did the, our energy demonstrations in class, I, I proved to you that you've got chemical reactions going on inside your body. When you break down glucose as part of cellular respiration, you can feel that. If you feel your forehead, you can feel the heat. Or if you put your arms underneath your armpits, you can feel the heat that's being generated in your body. That heat is the result of the oxidation, the breakdown, the decomposition of the glucose molecules that, you're, that you consume as part of your food. Now that free energy that's also released, that's the energy that's going to be used to do work. And it's captured in a molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is the cell's free energy carrier. And if you take a look at the picture right down here at the bottom left of the screen, you see what ATP looks like. And you, it may look familiar. This is actually uh, related to the ribonucleotides. It's got ribose. I can tell it's ribose because if you look here, it's got a hydroxyl group on carbon number two of this five carbon sugar ring. And it's got a nitrogenous base here. And in this case, it's adenine. And you may recall that double ringed nitrogenous bases are purines. Uh, and then it's got the phosphate group. So if it was just those three parts, we'd be looking at an adenine ribonucleotide. What's different here is that there are actually three phosphate groups joined in order here. This molecule, this is the molecule that stores free energy and is available for use in the cells very quickly, very uh, almost immediately. All right, so last main idea that we're going to talk about will be ATP. ATP, again, is adenosine triphosphate. It's what we would call the cellular energy currency. It's what the cell uses to do work. I mentioned this in class, but if your cells used glucose directly, there's just simply too much energy stored in this molecule. It would you end up burning your cells up by just reducing all the or re releasing all the energy in this molecule all at one time. So instead, we have this energy carrier called ATP that can reduce or release uh, little bits of energy that the cell can use to do work. Um, now, the, the energetic part of the ATP molecule is the bond between the second and third phosphate. And when we, when we break the bond between the second and third phosphate, we release energy to do work. And when we need to make more ATP, we can remake that bond. We can make the bond between the second and third, and that stores a little bit of free energy for later usage. So here we've got our ATP molecule. We've got the notion that it's used for cellular work. So ATP is like the, the gold of the cell. It's the cellular energy currency. So it can be used for breaking down, rearrangement of substances, contraction, muscle cells, active transport, moving things across the cell membrane. And it really, ATP is made and broken in a cycle of reactions, right? If you have ATP, you can release some energy for reactions that re require energy, or you can build up ATP in the process of reactions that release energy. And I'm going to take us out here real quickly to one I think really uh, useful uh, web animation here that'll help you to understand ATP a little bit more. Bring this up a little bit. All right, now ATP. We oftentimes talk about ATP as a rechargeable battery. When it's in the form of ATP, it's all charged up. When it's in the form of what we call ADP, adenosine diphosphate, then it's uncharged. So let me read through this with you here. Living things store energy mainly in the form of chemical bonds. Within your cells, energy is constantly moved around from one large molecule to another. How does the energy get converted from, say, a food molecule to muscle molecule? The answer is adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. ATP works like a rechargeable battery. Energy can be released by converting ATP to ADP, which is the uncharged form. Likewise, by binding to a third phosphate group, ADP can be converted back to ATP, the charged form. When you eat lunch, many complex chemical reactions occur, but in essence, all you are doing is recharging your ATP, because in order to do anything, flexing muscles, thinking, or whatever, your immediate energy source is ATP. So if we look at, the, the again, the ATP is like your charged battery, ADP is your dead battery. So when you're running low on energy, obviously we eat food, because food contains lots of chemical energy, potential energy, and then we digest that, we break it down, and we are able to capture that and recharge our ADP to make it ATP. I'm going to look at this next uh, slide here. Energy pathway. At the right is a diagram of a major pathway of energy transfer in the body. Large food molecules such as fats, carbohydrates, and proteins are pulled apart to release the energy in their chemical bonds. This energy is then used in many ways, including the buildup or synthesis of other large molecules. 
Examples of large molecules the body needs to build are proteins that make up much of the body's structure and temporary energy storage banks like fat and glycogen. To start the flow of energy, we're going to click on uh, the food molecules. So I'm going to take the food. We're eating food. And by eating food, we're transferring the energy that was in the food into ATP. So we've got obviously this pool of AT ADP, adenosine diphosphate, the dead battery, and phosphorus groups that float around the cell. And when we consume food, we're transferring energy from the food onto that ADP. And then when we need that, that cellular energy for work, if we need to do some sort of biosynthesis reaction, we're going to take the energy in the ATP and we're going to uh, use it for biosynthesis. So that third phosphate comes off. Uh, AD, ATP is broken down to ADP, which is the dead battery form, and that energy transfer can be used to build something up. Okay, so there you have it. That was energy, the, the whole aspect of cellular energy, bioenergy, starting with just the definition of energy in the first and second law. We looked at endo and exothermic reactions, how enzymes catalyze reactions to make them occur more quickly. And then in this uh, screencast, we really looked at decomposition reactions and oxidation reactions, uh, the whole idea of oxidation and reduction, moving electrons around, and then finally ATP, the cellular energy currency. So if you have any questions, make sure that you have them ready for us when you come into class, and we'll see you in biology.